I'm generally a really big fan of the Treehouse of Horror episodes of The Simpsons, and up until this point, I think I've loved pretty much every episode. I've been very positive about every episode. But when it comes to Treehouse of Horror 10, honestly, I didn't love it. There are three main segments, which I'll talk about in a moment. The first one, I actually quite liked. The second one, not really very much. I didn't hate it. And the same with the third one. I didn't hate it. And I think actually at the time, it's very timely. But watching it now, I just didn't get that much enjoyment out of it. So the first segment, um, this is the fourth episode of the 11th season of The Simpsons, and the first segment is I Know What You Diddly Italy Did. And it's a parody of I Know What You Did Last Summer, and they end up killing Ned Flanders, I won't say how exactly, and Homer tries to pretend that Ned is still alive. But there's also... Um, well, I don't want to say too much more about the narrative, actually, in case you haven't seen it. But then I thought, okay, that's actually really interesting. This is definitely something that is not canon. Things that happen in the Treehouse of Horror films are not actually part of the main series. There's obviously no continuity there. Um, and it was just, it was different, and I liked it. And I liked Ned Flanders as a character. Um, I liked to see the Simpsons family being tormented by this thing that they did, and nobody else knows to their knowledge, but... Things keep going wrong and get more and more threatening. Um, and ultimately, I, I liked it. I liked the development of it. I thought it worked very well. The second is desperately seeking Xena. And I think maybe because I don't care that much about Xena, the warrior princess, I didn't have that relatability to it. But Lucy Lawless voices in this. She is known for playing Xena. And um, comic book comic book guys in this and I have to say I like that aspect of it. I like comic book guy but bringing Xena into this and giving it a kind of superhero slant and Bart and Lisa get to become superheroes with their own um superhero strengths <laughs> Bart I will say credit where it's due um <laughs> Bart amused me I really liked Bart and I thought they really utilise that. And because comic book guys in it, there are references to other um, fandoms and little geeky things here and there that I did like. But for me, the overarching narrative, uh, I just, I didn't really care too much about. And I don't want to go into too much detail about it again. Um, there, is a, there is a villain, a character called The Collector, um, which is actually comic book guy. And he's basically going to extreme lengths to collect prized possessions and uh, I mean there's definitely an element of relatability there too with somebody I'm a minimalist now but I used to collect collections almost and you know there are certain things you want in your collection that you will go to any lengths to as we see with comic book guy um, so I seem to be talking very positively about it there is actually a lot about it that I think worked and things that I liked but as an episode or, or a segment I didn't enjoy it but there were bits in it that I liked so I guess what I'm trying to say is, had it not been Xena, had it been a character I have a connection with, um, maybe I would have liked it more. But on the face of it, I just didn't love it. And the third one is, life's a glitch, then you die. And for me now, I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. But at the time, this was released in 1999. Uh, Halloween 1999, according to Wikipedia. And... This is about <laughs> something that I don't remember anything about in any detail, but it's about the Y2K bug and obviously the fact that when the new when the millennium hit, technology was going to break down and also technology was going to take over everything. And this really plays into that. And again, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's a very short segment. Um, I think they're all about equal length in this episode, but short in general. Um, and it's about how they're going to escape this super bug and, and what this bug's actually going to do and um, how technology is going to overthrow people. And I mean, it's, it's an interesting enough concept. And at the time, I imagine actually it would have been really powerful and very timely. And I think they did a good job to um, address that so immediately. But looking at it now, obviously, as we know that that's ludicrous, the fear is not really there. So... It's interesting enough. I can't fault it for being a product of its time or for being better at the time of release. But watching it now, I just... I don't know. I didn't get anything from it. I didn't think it was interesting. I didn't think it was funny. I didn't think it was suspenseful. 
I just didn't care for it, but I can see the value in it. So needless to say, Treehouse of Horror 10, I didn't, I didn't detest it. I didn't think it was badly put together. I didn't think that it was poorly constructed. But at the same time, compared to pretty much every other Treehouse of Horror, it just seems to be missing something. 